Well, it seems like it's going to be beautiful weather for our drive. It's funny enough, actually, not too cold here this morning. It feels actually pretty all right at this stage. Anyway, before we get into all of that, um, my name is Tristan on camera. I've got Morgan, um, and we are slowly heading east at the moment in search of young Marips. The plan is to try and see if we can find him, catch up with him, just see how he's doing. Um, I read quite a lot of stuff about it over last night just to see and spoke to a few vets and there's really not much that is known about leopards and the effects of a venomous snake like a puff adder on them. They say that most of their experiences with domestic animals like dogs and cats um, and it always depends on amounts of animation, um, whether or not there's a bit of a resistance to it in that individual species and there's a whole bunch of things but the, the fact of the matter is is that they say a lot of animals do come right from a puff a bite it's just that there's going to be two things that could happen either it's going to swell and just come down again and it'll be all right but it'll take a good amount of time they reckon anywhere between so two weeks and a month that he'll be have a swollen paw um, if that is the case or he's going to have an issue where he's going to get the swelling and then the necrotic process is going to start and his skin is going to slough so you're going to get this like dark black skin that's going to come out and it's going to start to and it will probably not be very comfortable the problem and then from there infections so that's where he's going um, but I think more than anything, and I, and I honestly believe that he'll be able to recover from it. I don't think that it'll be like a life-threatening thing. There's some buffalo. Um, he, I think the, the biggest threat that he has is the, the fact that his ability to climb is a little bit compromised at the moment. Hopefully, is that lions don't find him and he doesn't start messing around with hyenas like he has been because hyenas see him hobbling about and incapacitated. They will be ruthless. Um, so that's what we got to hope for is that he can just kind of stay out of the way and just take it easy until he recovers nicely. And we just got to kind of think positive. It's not an absolute death sentence. And like I said, I've seen it go both ways um, with leopards. Some have done okay and others haven't. Um, so we'll just have to see him again. It's a natural thing. So for those of you that you know, are stressed about it and are saying that we should intervene, there's very little that we can do and as I explained yesterday evening uh, situation here in this particular reserve where yes wildlife in, in world terms has declined and was under pressure due to human um, kind of what, what, human pressure is probably the best way to put it but in this particular reserve the leopard population is as healthy as it can possibly be and while that doesn't make it easy to accept um, leaving an animal when it's when it's had an injury, um, you need to understand that this is a, we're trying to make this as natural a system as possible. And like we don't go and help a buffalo with a leg, um, we also won't be helping it because it's not, not like it's an in highly endangered system that has a, um, in this particular area that animal will still be fairly um, kind of fairly. Populated, um, so it's it's a hard thing and it's difficult because you know we have an emotional attachment to these animals, but at the end of the day, this is how wildlife works. These animals have to survive things out here. And I was saying yesterday that nature is harsh and unforgiving at times, um, and so you know we have to we have to just respect for the fact that this has been going on for millions of years, and these animals, um, you know, are. are capable of dealing with it and if they aren't well then that bloodline I'm afraid is not as strong as it should be and so that's nature's way of ensuring the strongest survive and, and that things going forward um, you know are, are as good as they can be but it's going to be a, a, a rough ride I think for a lot of you and it's not going to be a quick one either um, I don't think we're going to have a resolution of this to this morning it's not like we're going to go there and Reefs is going to be jumping around all over the place I don't think he might be let's see um but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, beefy buffalo. This is just some bulls that are on the edge of a, of a herd. I left the herd yesterday coming in this general direction. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised that um, more of the herd was kind of hanging around in this area. Um, and as we go, maybe we'll bump into more. It's been quite nice having a lot of buffalo around of late. All right, I'm going to... He's all curled up in his little ball like I thought he would be. But his paw is 
monstrous. It is swollen massively. You can see it there. That's that front paw just by his face. It is way out of proportion. I mean, if you look at his back leg there, it's almost like the front paw is the same size as the top of the back leg. So he's going to be a sore kitty this morning. I think it's going to be painful and swollen and like that for a few days, unfortunately. Um, the good news is, is that he's awake. Um, you can see he's not his normal self. He's not kind of taking his eyes off us. He's a little bit sort of watchful and he's going to need to be like this. Um, unfortunately, um, he's in a bit of a compromised state, so his ability to relax is not as much as it normally is and to do his kind of playful Marip's things he's going to have to just take it easy for a little bit and just spend time resting and kind of taking time to heal shame my boy has it been a long night I can imagine how painful it is like I was saying to Morgan now that um, people that I know that have been hit by puff adders um, they all say the same thing, that it's one of the most excruciating things that they've had. So he'll be in pain, unfortunately. Um, he looks okay, though. He doesn't look like he's kind of drowsy or struggling with any sort of breathing or anything like that. Not that that would cause this, but this kind of venom. Um, this is a cytotoxic venom. So basically, this is just breaking down tissue. Um, that's what the puff out venom does. Um, interesting enough, when I was talking to vets yesterday, they were telling me that snake bites from neurotoxic um, snakes or snakes that have a heavier neurotoxic venom um, is much less likely for um, for them to survive. But in this case, you know, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how he goes. All right, well, we'll stay with him probably for the remainder of the morning. It's not going to be much action, I'm afraid, from here. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to see him kind of just get up and move a little bit and see how he's doing. As you can see, Marius is still just kind of looking over his shoulder. He's a lot more kind of, not nervous, but he's definitely a lot more watchful than he normally is. Normally he looks at you for a little bit and then just starts looking around and doing other things. But today he's just watching us. Um, quite a lot and he almost looks like he's feeling sorry for himself I can hear lions roaring as well it's far but I can there's lions roaring somewhere it sounds like maybe Mala Mala um, that they're calling from um, but yeah he's you can see he's kind of looking around I mean obviously his ability to move is going to be compromised a little bit so the best thing for him is just to lie and curl up into a ball it's not ideal that he's kind of curled his head into the grass rather than the opposite way around but you know i think he was cold and probably find that that was a nice little protective area also hard for other animals to find him like this it's not like he's easily kind of spotted particularly from the road he's hidden himself behind a nice little thicket where he can just lie down and take it easy. I actually think his best bet is to try and find a nice dense termite mound somewhere and try to get up onto the termite mound and just lie on top of there. I think that's going to be his best bet. Um, there's actually one that's not that far from where we are right now. Um, so, let's see. We'll try and hope that he does okay and that finds himself a nice little spot to sit but it's going to be a long process this is not going to be overnight that he's going to come right oh wise one um i don't know to be honest with you I, it's come at a very awkward time this whole thing because he's definitely been spending a lot of time on his own of late and while tundi has come back to feed him i think that that mother son bond was slowly being eroded um and the fact that she hasn't kind of, well, we haven't seen her come back for three days now, is not unusual, but it's, uh, it maybe is a sign that things are starting to kind of deteriorate between the two of them. But I'm hoping when she finds him and he's injured that she will be a lot more maternal and she'll stay with him and she'll kind of try and just look after him as much as possible. But mother leopards are, are interesting. They sometimes know when there's issues um, that they need to potentially just leave the animal and, and kind of go and do their own thing. What I'm hoping she does is she manages to catch something small 
um, bring it back to where he is and he can eat it like a little scrub here. Because the problem is, is you can't really take him to a kill um, unless the kill's on the ground. Because in this condition, I don't think he'll be able to climb. Um, I think he's going to really struggle to actually even just walk. So, you know, getting up into a tree is not going to be a, pro a possibility for him. And if there's hyenas there and they spot a very injured leopard, they could give him a hard time. So it's going to require quite a delicate process. I'm sorry, my boy, I know it's sore. Um, and she's going to have to kind of balance things. And I don't know what the answer is to it. I think time will tell whether Tundi comes and spends time with him. And who knows, maybe she'll, she'll find him and she will kind of, it'll kickstart her maternal instincts to to really kind of spend time around him and just protect him and um, which would be amazing if it did um, but I don't know I honestly don't know what the answer is to it at this stage I think you know we're going into a little bit of uncharted territory because I've never seen a young animal like this that was still very dependent on its mom um, get hit I've seen, all the other leopards I've seen have already been quite big so Ravens caught cubs they were already um, the one was already over two years old and um, Quatile was you know she was an adult leopard at that point. In fact, that was quite a horrible story because she actually had cubs at the time. Um, so those cubs would have died too because their mother died. Um, they were little. But, yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure what's going to happen with Tandy or how she's going to go about it um, or what the kind of process is going to be. But, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think, you know, spending time with him, hopefully she, she arrives at some point and... Um, you know, he's able to care for him a little bit. The problem is that she's going to have to try find him, um, which is not easy because he's not going to move towards her call, um, and she's potentially left him somewhere else. So, I mean, we know how mobile he's been. In the, the last two days, he's gone to Chitwa Dam Wall, he's been in the Murawanini, he's been up here, and he's kind of gone back and forth on his tracks. So, for Tandy, it must be very difficult to find this little guy and make a lot of noise because he doesn't want to attract too much attention to himself in this condition. Such a beautiful cat that hopefully everything will be okay. I mean, he looks fairly kind of, what's the word? I, it's not like he's lethargic or anything like that. I mean, he's, he's kind of moving and he's looking up and he's generally sort of interested in things around him. It's not like he's, um, you know, not moving, but he's definitely, definitely um, but a very, very, very big paw at this stage. So, Pamela, where he killed the puff adder from where we are now is probably about, I'd say maybe 30 yards. Um, but where I left him last night, this is exactly where he used to lay up. So, he was moving when I left it. Well, he was trying to move when I left him down towards the Mulawanini riverbed, but he stopped pretty much where I left him. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I, signal here is a bit sketchy, so that's why we didn't follow him yesterday. As unfortunately, uh, the signal goes up and down in this area, so we're lucky that we can kind of, where he's lay up, we can actually spend a bit of time. But he hasn't moved far at all. Um, you can maybe see now just how big that paw is. Look at the size of the back paw. And I know the back paw is always more slender and narrow, but you can see a monster is different. And even in the in the front left paw, it's half the size, if not a third. Um, so it's going to be sore for a while, I'm afraid. Let's see how he gets up. It looks like he wants to get up. I think he can hear the buffalo that are coming. Um, there's a big herd of buffalo that I can hear to the north of us. Oh, it's sore, my boy. You can imagine for him how bored he must be. Hmm. You're an adventuring cat normally. Oh. He's been grooming it a lot though, which is can see there's a little bit of matted fur there and he's kind of been trying to look after it as much as possible but it's sore. Okay, big stretches. It's actually not as swollen as I first thought. It's actually come, funny enough, it's actually not as bad as it was even last night. Last night was worse than this, um, which is quite interesting. 
Um, now that his kind of leg, I can actually see properly, he had his leg bent. That's why it looked so much wider than it was. If you look at his front paw and his back paw, they're actually not that dissimilar now, um, which is good news. So that's it, definitely that horrendous swelling around the paw joint that he had yesterday. I mean, it was really like a big bubble around there. Is come down a little bit. Um, it's not as bad as it was yesterday. But shame. He's, you can see he's uncomfortable. All right. Well, we'll sit with him and we'll just babysit him and kind of be his friend for the morning. In the meantime, though, let's send you across to Chad.